If you are watching this, you probably enjoy math. That's great. That means we all share the same common experience of being stuck on a difficult problem and having no idea how to start. I don't think anyone has found a recipe to solve all math problems yet. But what I hope to accomplish in this series of videos is just to give something of a starter kit. A bunch of ideas that we can try out that may not always work, but will be certainly better than just staring blankly at a problem. Let me start by describing our plan. We will introduce a number of problem solving techniques and demonstrate how they are useful for solving various types of problems. These techniques are applicable to all kinds of topics, so there should be something for everyone, regardless of whether you are 10, 20 or 50 years old. Before we get started with the techniques proper, in this video, I will be discussing the kinds of problems we will be focusing on in this series. Most of the time, regular school assignments and exams are filled with exercises. These questions are mostly direct applications of formulas or methods which were recently taught. This first example is an exercise, since x minus 1 cubed can just be expanded using the standard algebraic identity. And if you have learned algebra, you know exactly what to do. So this isn't really a problem because we don't need any creativity to come up with the appropriate method. By way of contrast, the second example is a problem because even with a calculator, we can't calculate 999999 cubed and we certainly don't want to do long multiplication. So anyone attempting this would need to think about how to avoid calculating in full and yet be able to find the sum of digits. So these are the sorts of problems we want to work on. Sometimes, a problem becomes an exercise because we have learned new techniques. For instance, if you have learned calculus, finding the minimum value of a single variable function like x squared plus 16 over x is just a standard exercise. In contrast, one would need to creatively use the AMGM inequality to tackle this without calculus, making it more of a problem. In our discussion of problem solving, we hope to look at problems which can't just be instantly destroyed by a high-powered theorem or result, but instead are meant to be solved by nothing more than basic ideas. There are many problems which have multiple approaches, each of which gives the correct answer. Usually, the most obvious method does work, but it's just really, really slow. Some of you may know the famous story concerning a young Carl Friedrich Gauss. As punishment, his teacher asked his entire class to sum the numbers from 1 to 100. This was meant to be a torturous exercise. But Gauss viewed this as a math problem. And since he viewed this as a math problem, he looked for a better method. He found the ingenious shortcut that by pairing up 1 and 100, 2 and 99, 3 and 98 and so on, each pair would sum to 101. And this makes the total 50 times 101, which is 5050. Before we proceed, let me clarify that these videos are not meant to teach you 100 new mathematical tricks. Instead, I want to give you a sense of how we can come up with these kinds of clever ideas on our own without having to learn each and every possible trick in the book. One final point, I should emphasize that we are focusing on solved problems which means that we know there is a method, we know that it is within our grasp, and we are just looking for this method. If we are focusing on unsolved problems, these techniques can still work. But of course, we don't expect that they would immediately solve a problem that mathematicians have tried and failed over centuries. But still, these kinds of techniques that we discuss can be used to give you a gut feel, a few basic ideas of how the problem works, and what sort of theories are relevant to these kinds of research areas. And who knows, maybe one of you can think of a novel idea which nobody else has thought of before. In summary, here are the types of problems which we will look at. Our problems should go beyond mindlessly chugging to formulas, and they can't simply be crushed into submission by advanced tools. They should possess a relatively clever and elegant method. 
that at least one other person has managed to think of, presumably the problem setter. In our next video, we'll start with our first problem solving technique, getting your hands dirty. It's pretty self-explanatory really, but you'll see how useful it can be. If you are looking forward to this series, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more problem solving fun. If you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.